assessment. If you are using LightWave 9.6, there is a third-party plugin called MDD Pointer Node that can do the same thing by Dennis Pontanier, and you can find it through Ken's excellent LightWave plugin database. So let's load that asset. It's going to first look in vert cache, but ClothFX defaults to saving in the dynamics, uh, the dynamics folder, the grid. So I take this displacement and I plug it into the input. And oh look, I'm, it's playing back, but there's something not quite right here. Anyone see what's going wrong? Look at this corner, or better yet, let me show you from the side. This is the original bounding box. When I calculated it, remember that value I told you about? Pay attention because there will be a quiz later. Yes. I had moved this thing up 100 millimeters on the y-axis. Cloth effects baked that translation into the MDD file, but I left my key turned on at one millimeter up on the y. This is why you need the playback scene to be separate because if you want it to look look how it's uh, it's doubling up the y value. So what I have to do now, it's not a big deal. I have to zero this out, but I still need to remember this value. There. See, the bounding box is set to uh, zero, but now it's, it's exactly what I've had originally. Now, this is actually desirable behavior in MDD displacement. I'd rather have the ability to layer additional translation and additional displacements on top of the asset. You just have to keep in mind that when you play it back, when you're, you're using it as an asset, make sure that the original mesh is zeroed out. Okay, that was part one of that quiz. Part two is going to be coming up in a bit. Because I've got it playing back, and that's great. But remember how I had that really cool displacement inside the grooves? Well, we're going to use bump displacement to do that. Now, first let's surface this thing so it looks a little cooler than the Tron polygons I got going on right now. So you pull up the surface editor, and the first improvement we're going to make is smoothing. And that looks a lot better. But it still doesn't have that really cool displacement that I had. So here's where you use a nice little ability of subdivision ordering. Because notice that when I crank up the subdivision, the higher it goes, the smoother everything goes, like it's, it smooths everything out. All the polygonal errors just kind of melt. Like the higher the subdivision level goes, the better everything looks. As opposed to if I had it set to a value of zero. Well, maybe it's not as obvious here because I do have smoothing turned on. But notice how like even with smoothing turned off, how like just the subdivision alone smooths everything out. Everyone catching this? So when you start out with a pretty harsh displacement, like cloth effects, subdivision is a good thing, because it will smooth everything out. But uh, do you have a question? Is that, that's displacing the polygonal mesh now, right? Uh, I mean, your, your cloth effects is working on a polygonal mesh. It's working on the cage object right oh, now. Okay. It's displacing, uh, it's displacing these points because that's what it was recorded off of. But because I have the subdivision order ha set to last, first cloth effects displaces these points, and then it gets subdivided. So everything gets all the the points get smoothed out with subdivision. You, can you get weird not finer polygons doing that? Or? No, because so see, okay. if you leave it at, at zero, yes because it doesn't triple them at zero. It leaves it at the cage level. But once you set it to one or higher, it starts tripling everything. These are the sub patches. So let me uh, disable this for now, because I want to show you bump displacement. Because when you see them individually, then it makes a little more sense when I combine them. So I've got. Uh, I've got my subdivision order set to last. For now, I'm going to set it to first. It's OK, because I've got edit nodes disabled. LightWave won't get too mad at me here. 
I'm going to set it to first. And let me turn on Edit Nodes, Add Node, 3D Textures, Crumple. I'm going to take the alpha channel of this, which would just be where the texture occurs and where it does not occur. And I'm going to plug it into the displacement of the surface node. And that's the node editor. I'm going to go back here, go to the deform tab, enable bump, and nothing's going to happen because distance is set to zero. Let's set it to one meter. Wherever the crumple texture occurs, it's getting pushed up along its normal by one meter. That's a little extreme here. So let's set it to 0 0.05. Or maybe 100. And let me go back to here so you can see that if I invert this texture, well, maybe it's not showing up uh, as much there. Actually, let me turn smoothing back on. And remember, I've got subdivision order happening first. The plane is getting subdivided and then the bump, uh, this bump texture is getting applied. Okay, I just set subdivision order level to six, so there's lots more polygons. You see how much more definition that texture is getting? Zoom huh? Zoom in a bit. Do, zoom, oh, sorry, good idea. Let me invert it. Add a little more small detail. Okay, so I've got this procedural texture. It's displacing everything along the normals. Now, this is with the subdivision order set to first. Looks cool, right? Let me set subdivision order to last. Oh, God, where did it go? What happened was the points are getting displaced. If I, if I change it to wireframe, points are getting displaced, and then it's getting subdivided. But look how how much detail that you could have with that procedural texture, but that's just getting lost because there just aren't enough points to go around when you set, when you have, uh, when you have it displace the cage first and then smooth it out with the points. This is not cool. What I want is I want it to happen after subdivision because that looks cool, right? But that cloth effects was recorded on the low poly cage. I need that to happen before subdivision. I need this coolness to happen after subdivision. So I'm going to show you how to solve that problem. Notice I've just been going to these extremes. There's all these options in between. I'm going to choose this option, after bones. Now, I'm not actually using any bones in this. Uh, what I want is I want the node displacement to happen before bones. Oh, look. What's happening now is there's a little stack going on. Everything that happens before bones, everything that happens before bones is, uh, that's happening on the cage object because I'm telling it to actually subdivide after bones. This says half before bones, so let's say theoretically bones occur. In this case, none, but it doesn't matter. We've got telling it to have this, this subdivision happen after bones, but we're telling the node displacement to happen to before bones. And uh, even though it looks like the texture showing up great, I usually, for safety's sake, set this to before world displacement. I'm not sure it's making a difference here. It just seemed to make a difference in some 9.6 setups I had once. But, okay, so we've gotten to this point where we've, we've got a really cool looking procedural texture and a cloth effects displacement. Uh, everyone with me so far? Mm -hmm. Any questions about how I have the, how I'm having the subdivision happen where I want it to? Any questions at all? Okay. Then in that case, the only thing that remains is Remember that how the texture, this really cool texture, was only occurring where it was displaced by the cloth effects. Yet here I have it all over. 
I want it to only happen in the trails of the of the rover. I don't want it to happen. I don't want it to happen like all over the place. I mean, it's all right, but I don't I don't want that. Well, luckily it is a texture. So I'm going to disable the bump for now because I'm going to create an alpha, a world coordinate alpha to tell it where I want this texture to be. So I'm going to disable this for now. I'm going to save my scene just in case Lightwave gets mad at me. And I'm going to turn on VPR. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want to debug an alpha and I want you to see it in real time. So let's add a couple of nodes here. I'm going to add a gradient node. And I'm going to plug its color into diffuse shading, which means that it's going to override the color of that object with whatever I plug in here. Now, for now, I'm going to tell it Y coordinate. And I'm going to have the start at negative 0.01. And I'm going to have the end at 0 0.01. And I'm going to tell it everything up to here has to be white. Everything uh, here has to be white. And that's kind of what I wanted, but not quite. I want only the trails to be white. And the, what I'm going after here is that the main displacement occurring on this plane is on the y-axis. So wherever it's displaced off of 0 on the Y, I want it to be white. And wherever it is 0 on the Y, I want it to be black. Well, the problem is, remember that quiz? I moved this thing 0.1 meters up on the Y axis. So even if I have world coordinates and all that, the problem is uh, 0 is way down here. I mean, it's, it's below. It's, far below this plane. This is not zero. These points here are not zero on the Y. So what I need to do is I need to offset my gradient. So I'm going to add a spot node. This set, and this represents, say, any given point on this surface. World spot just means world coordinates for me. I'm going to add a node called vector scalar. I want to extract the Y coordinate out of the world spot. I want to extract the Y coordinate. Now I've got the Y coordinate. If I plug it into the input, it's not going to do anything because I have no offset yet. So let me add a node, math, scalar, subtract. I want 100 millimeters on the Y axis to be treated as the new zero. So 100 millimeters minus 100 millimeters, that's the same as 100 millimeters, happens to equal zero. Because anything minus itself will equal zero. Everyone following me here? Now, uh, are you familiar with alpha maps in other packages? 